What is up everybody and welcome back to part two of Does Fence Post Foam Really Work? Today we're revisiting the Sika brand. After the last video, there was quite a bit of uh, comments about maybe the conditions weren't optimal. The, it was a little bit cooler. It had recently rained the night before. Today's about as optimal as it gets. It's the mid fifties right now, high of 62, partly sunny, hasn't rained in weeks. This is about as optimal as fencing conditions are gonna get. Another piece of feedback we had received was that we should try out a, a brand called uh, Postlock. So we've also added it to our testing today. And as a control, we've already set two posts with standard concrete. So today there's gonna be a total of six posts, two SICA set, two post lock set, and two concrete set. You know, another piece of feedback we saw in the comments was that the posts weren't properly braced prior to setting them. So we went ahead and braced up these posts before the video shoot. I went ahead and made sure there, every post was plumb both in both axes, both front to back, side to side. So the posts are perfectly plumb and ready to be set. Before we get into the testing, if you guys find this content helpful, educational, heck even amusing, it would mean the world to us if you gave it a like. It lets YouTube know that we're producing good content that you like to watch. Also, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And when you do, hit that notification bell and set notifications to all so that YouTube lets you know each and every week when we have new content available. With that being said, Let's get into it. All right, so the first two posts we're gonna set with the post lock product. It's a little bit different than the Sika. If you'll remember, the Sika is all in one package. You break a seal, you mix it up, you cut the hole and then pour it in the hole. This is a little bit different. So they've got a part A and a part B, which I assume is what's in the Sika is a, is a similar part A, part B. Uh, but this, you actually just pour the bottle of A directly into the bottle B, shake it up vigorously. Now it says, it says to shake vigorously for 20 to 30 seconds. Quickly remove the cap, pour contents in the hole. They should start expanding within 20 or 30 seconds. Also, the website mentioned that it's ready to use in about 15 to 20 minutes, as opposed to Seca's instructions say that it's ready in about two hours. So this could be an even faster version of the Seca product. All right, so, you know, I didn't talk about the holes yet. We used a six inch auger, which means these holes are gonna be between seven and eight inches once it uh, kind of wallers out that hole a little bit. They're also uh, 20, 26 to 28 inches. We shoot for 30. On this, uh, we hit a really solid layer of rock. So uh, they're 26 to 28 inches deep. So I'm gonna mix this part A with the part B, shake vigorously for about 30 seconds and then pour the whole mixture down in this hole. I would expect it's probably gonna get warm. Seems like there's a thermal reaction that goes on. All right, that's about 20 seconds. <laughs> that lid just popped right off. It had quite a bit of pressure built up in there. So I'm gonna pour it all around the post. Make sure we cover all the nooks and crannies. Of course, we're using these Postmaster posts, so they've got kind of a hat feature on them. Just make sure we get plenty of it inside that hat and all around. That's the last, last little dregs kind of seep out of here. All right, with that post being done, we'll move on to our second post of post lock. We want to do a couple posts, that way we could get a, a little bit better feel for, you know, the, for the product, so it wasn't just like a one-off type situation. Again, we're gonna take product A, mix it with product B, shake it for about 20 to 30 seconds. That's a thicker, it's a thicker consistency. You know, Jeremy mentioned earlier, it uh, kind of gives you the impression of, of uh, transmission fluid. A little bit thicker, a little bit darker. All right, got those mixed. I'm gonna put the cap on. Mix vigorously for 20 to 30 seconds. All right, that's about 20 seconds. So we're gonna pour it in here again. Again, mixing it all around, pouring it all around the post. So we get a good base layer in there, making sure we get plenty in this hat feature here. Yeah. That's it. Now we wait. Yeah. Seems like it's doing a good job getting inside the hat. That's always a concern of mine is, is it gonna fill up 
all the nooks and crannies. Seems like it's doing a good job. Now this first post is still expanding and it's part of the po parts, the outside of the hole is actually, I'd say it's right now at grade. It's pretty close to being a grade. It's only been maybe a couple minutes. You can actually visually see it expand, which is neat. Let's see, since I've got safety gloves on, let's see what the consistency here is. So it's kind of tacky, a little hard. It's warm, fairly warm. So there's still a bit of a chemical reaction going on there. Very tacky. The second hole, I'd say the second hole right now is about half full. Again, it's doing a good job of keeping itself inside that hat. Now on the first post we've seen, you guys can see that the foam is actually taller than grade. It's actually expanded up and outside of the hole. Uh, so the instructions say you can cut off any excess with a knife or with a shovel is what it, it recommends. So we typically always have shovels on the crew, so that'd be good to know. Seems like it's slowing down a little bit. The backside of this hole is actually just about right at grade, whereas the outside is, the outside's above grade. All right, well, it seems like both these products or both these holes, same product, same post lock product. Uh, I've done a really good job expanding. Now with the Sika, what we saw with the Sika was a day later that that foam had actually then shrunk again. Um, so we'll keep an eye on we'll keep an eye on the post lock. When I was doing some research on what might have happened and all that, so one thing about the post lock product and there's others out there too. It's a closed cell to where once it once it finishes curing out, it actually is a hard protective shell. And it doesn't let it shrink or constrict or whichever term you'd like to use. Uh, it doesn't let it pull away from both the post and the hole, which is what we saw last time uh, with the Sika product. So as, we've, as we wait for these to cure, let's go ahead and get our Sika product, our Sika post started. So the Sika product we're testing out today is the same product we tested out last time. It's the Sika Pro Select. I found this, uh, I found it, you can find it pretty much in any of your Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards. Now there were a few other brands mentioned as a competitor to Sika, but unfortunately I visited both Lowe's, the Home Depot, both Menards here in Springfield, and Sika was the only product that was in each and every store. So it's what we have to compare to. Now with the Sika product, just like we did last time, we roll, you've got part B and part A, you roll from part B, break this seal into part A, and then using your knee, knead it very vigorously as well. Make sure you get both parts really mixed very equally. And then it says 15 seconds is what you mix it here. So uh, similar to the post log, the post log was 20 to 30 seconds. This is 15 seconds. If I remember correctly, this product gets very warm as you're mixing it. I'm gonna go ahead and get my knife ready because once you start this process, it goes pretty quickly. So I'm going to roll it, get it fairly tight, burst from part B to part A, squeeze all of it in there, and then just start on my knee, mixing it very vigorously. Flip it over. All right, go ahead and cut the corner. Now again, we wanna make sure we get this product all around the post. That way it gives it a good base layer. Now this, the Sika product is quite a bit, uh, quite a bit more watery just in uh, viscosity. It's, it's a pretty thin, whereas the post lock was a bit thicker. Make sure we get all of it out there. One thing to notice with the Sika brand too is that you can't, you can't see the mixtures inside. With the post lock, one of the things I like about that product is I could actually see it mixing up. I could tell that it's a consistent mixture. With the Sika, you kind of just have to mix and hope that you get it all together. I mean, you've got 15 seconds to get it there, so you're moving pretty quick anyway. Here we go. So again, we're gonna roll from part B, break part into part A, get it all in there, 15 seconds. Should be 15 seconds there. Clip our corner, pour it in. Yeah. 
Now it looks like the first post that we just set with the Sika, the outside of the post is full quite a bit quicker than the inside of the post, which is kind of interesting. We saw that with the, or we see that with the post lock as well. Go ahead and make sure we keep our worksite clean here. Now on this post set, one thing I was noticing just a minute ago, it is already just completely hard. It's a really hard shell. Yeah, second post is already hard too. So on the on the Sika post, the outside is already full. It's above grade. The back side, I'd say it's probably, oh, three quarters or so. But it's continuing to expand. Fourth hole, we actually have a GoPro on that. So you guys should be getting a, a little bit closer look on exactly what's going on in here. Now, if you guys were with me on the first video, you know that uh, we had a clear bucket or we had, uh, that, yeah, we had a clear bucket. That way we poured the sick inside the bucket. We could actually have a really cool outside looking in shot. Well, apparently right now, clear buckets aren't available anywhere. Because while I was at the Lowe's Home Depot Menards trying to find, you know, these additional foam products that you guys had mentioned, uh, no one had clear buckets anymore. Everyone had kind of their own brand of, you know, colored bucket, but no one has clear buckets. So everyone says there's a, a bucket shortage as well. So just add that to the list of, uh, you know, job site materials that are in short supply. On the packaging, it says the sick posts are uh, set up within three minutes, but it does say you wait two hours before going ahead and putting any sort of fencing material on these. Now, this isn't the only test we're going to be performing or the only video we're going to be uh, shooting with these posts. What we're going to be doing after this is we'll use these posts to show um, privacy fence, how I nail a privacy fence, shadow box fence, and board on board, which are kind of the three most common types of fence that we install. Also, it might be hard to tell in the video, there's a decent grade change here from the very first post to the very last post. It slopes from your, from my left to right, from your right to left. Uh, so we're going to be showing also how we prefer to build fence with the grade, but we'll also probably on one of these first panels show what it looks like just keeping it exactly straight and then stair stepping it down. The idea is I can show you guys some different styles of fence and how we install it, how we nail it up, how we get the tops at six inches, the, how we get the top straight, that sort of thing. Uh, but also I wanna leave these up long term so that we'll get a really good feel for a short term, how does the post foam perform, but also more of a long term. You know, I'm thinking we might check in every six months or so, give the panels a shake. Is I wanna put panels on these posts also because a post standing up by itself it's not going to get a lot of force on it. So let's put a fence panel on it to try to reenact some real work, real world conditions. Uh, now we are kind of in a protected area here. It's not going to get a lot of high winds. It won't get kids pushing up against it, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's going to be as real world as, as we can replicate here uh, at my testing facility. So the first sick of post, still warm. What's interesting is, once this is cured, uh, we'll bring the camera around. Uh, but again, so it's not, it's not affixing to the post. It's not sticking to the post. So what's actually happened is it's separated. I can fit my whole hand in between the foam that you see and the post. You know, it's, it's not attaching at all, which is interesting. The, the post lock, I mean, the post lock doesn't seem to have any problem attaching to the, wood, the metal post. So that was a comment that I'd seen a few times from you guys in the videos was talking about, well, this product is probably only for wood posts. Um, when, you read the, when you read the packaging, so it actually goes into detail and says, uh, for all types of posts, wood, steel, PVC, you know, for this testing, we're using steel posts because in our business, in my business, steel posts are predominantly what we use. Um, they're just, it's just a better proposition, better quality and value proposition for the client. So it's what I'm going to test because it's what I want to see real world data on. Uh, if I'm testing a wood post, it's not really going to be as applicable to the fence that we install. The last sick of post, now it's still expanding, of course, it's about half full. So 
I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, we'll probably cut this right now, and then I'd like Jeremy to bring the camera around so I can show you exactly what's going on on the inside of this post. All right, so as I was telling you guys, um, one thing I noticed right off the bat is, again, we saw this in the first one, uh, in the first testing, that the SICA just didn't do a good job of attaching to these steel posts. I mean, you can stick, I can stick my whole hand in this cavity that uh, it's creating. It's just, it's not affixing well at all to that post. Um, my next shot, what we'll do is we'll grab the camera, take it over there to the post lock and show you that it's doing quite a bit better job of, of getting in there and getting nice and secure around the post, make sure that it's held really firmly. All right, so on this post, what we're seeing, this is the post lock, the very first post that we set. You know, it's right in there. I mean, parts of this are, are affixed to the post, to that steel post, but then even the parts that aren't are just in there really firmly. Now, it's, re it's really wild to note that the heat that this has put off has made this post fairly warm. It's pretty warm to the touch. But anyway, it's gotten in there really tight. It's holding this post you know, very firmly. I would almost bet that once we take this brace off or these braces off, I would bet this is probably gonna be a firmer hold than the Sika, just my initial impressions. Uh, again, temperature's optimal, moisture content's optimal in the, in the ground. It hasn't rained in a while. It's a nice warm day. Uh, so this is about as optimal <laughs> fence building weather as we're gonna get. Uh, yeah, so it's good to see that at least one of the foam products is performing well. Now guys, here we are at the last hole, the final hole that I had set with the uh, Sika product. This is something that we saw in the last uh, in the last testing also. The foam just failed to fill the hole. On the back side, I'd say the back side's probably, I don't know, probably four to six inches from the grade. But this front side, I mean, I could stick my entire hand fist down in there uh, into the void that's left. Now it says it sets in, th in as little as three minutes. We've actually given this one five minutes. Um, and it seems to be, seems to be done expanding. You know, it's actually, and it's uh, getting cool to the touch, a little tacky still. Uh, yeah, pretty disappointing all in all. You know, I showed you the the, uh, the other holes where it's uh, filled up with the post lock. Those did well. And actually, the other hole with Sika did well filling it up. Uh, it left the cavity in between the post and the foam, but it certainly filled up past past grade. So I don't know. It, it seems like it seems like the product's fairly inconsistent which is, like I said, it's absolutely disappointing because this is the foam that you'll find when you go to your local home store. You know, this is the foam that's just waiting for you on the shelves. So, uh, yeah, like I said, fairly disappointing. All right, so for the initial test, the one test that we can do today is going to be a shake test. Really feel how firm these posts are in their expanded foam. Now we've given each of these posts uh, sufficient time to cure up and, and get properly set. You know, one, uh, one suggestion I saw come up fairly often in the comments of the first video is, uh, is trying to pull the post out of the ground. You know, well, do a, do a pull test to see how much strength it takes to get them out of the ground. And we can certainly do that. The thing is, I don't know how real world that test is. Like, it's a neat test. It's fun to watch, but I mean, I guess, you know, that would be applicable if uh, like a tornado came through and was ripping fence posts out or, or the earth lost gravity maybe and is trying to pull the post straight out of the ground. Other than that, I don't see the relevance of a pull test. I mean, we could certainly do one if you guys want to see one, but uh, it wouldn't really be applicable to like the day to day. What we're going to be concerned with is the sturdiness of the post, which these are firm. These post matcher posts are going to give because what you want, you want them to give a little bit so that in a windstorm, the more rigid a structure, the quicker it fails, the quicker it breaks. So these posts themselves are going to have a little bit of uh, flex in them. But I'm watching the foam in the ground. This, these, posts, these posts are solid. Now this first post, it, it gets a little bit of, a bit of an advantage. It actually has a concrete sidewalk on two sides of it. So really, it just has ground on one side of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, these posts are, are as firm as I, was, I would expect them to be. Uh, do they move? Yes, but that was the, simply the flexing of the Postmaster post. I bet when we get down to our control at the end, the concrete post, we'll see those flex as well. All right, so now we find ourselves at the second pair of posts, post three and four, which are what we set using the Sika. So it's it's actually fairly firm in there. I, I had almost expected this, this post especially to be less firm. 
It's the post that we looked at where it's got a huge cavity in between the post and the foam. I can stick my whole hand in there. It's actually pretty firm. It's, I mean, you can see the foam move. It's actually fairly firm. It's more firm than I thought it would be. This, this post is fairly firm as well. I would say, I would say they might not be as firm as the post lock post, but they're still fairly secured in there. This was another one. So this was the post that didn't fill up all the way. The, the side of the hole that's closest to you guys is probably half to three quarter full maybe. And it's still, it's still fairly firm. Let's go check out the concrete posts. All right, so this is our last set of posts. These posts were actually set yesterday with quick, with uh, quick, quick set, quick creep. Say that a few times fast. I wanted a control here so that you guys could see, you know, kind of what the baseline is on how these posts move. So, yeah, I mean, as expected, it's, it's concrete, right? But the point here being the post still flex. So I didn't want you to see post flex on the foam post, whichever po foam posts were shaking. I didn't want you to see those posts flex and think that it's somehow reflected on the, on the foam. These Postmaster posts are just made to flex so that they can have higher wind load rating. So while they are firm in the ground, I mean, it's a concrete product. It's quick creep, pre-mixed sacrete. You get the same concrete in every hole. This is our go-to, this is our standard. So let's talk for a minute on where we would use foam and why I was interested in testing it in the first place. Uh, sometimes we get on large commercial projects that don't have water there, either don't have water yet or don't have water at all and where we would have to contract out the trucking in of water uh, to mix in the concrete or, you know, pre-mix in the concrete trucks that come out. A lot of the projects we're on though as fence professionals, we don't have a lot of opportunity to bring concrete trucks out. It's typically around the perimeter of a, of a property, through a field, that sort of thing. Uh, so we would typically contract water to come in, mix our concrete, pour it in the hole, that sort of thing on a commercial project. So what I'm excited about the foam is on projects like that, it's quick and easy. We don't have to contract for water. Is the foam more expensive than concrete? It is. But when you factor in the price, I mean, contracting water, you wouldn't think it's that expensive. It can get pretty costly. You know, the second use case I could see for the foam would be a smaller job, you know, a, a couple hundred foot job that you want to try to get set and finished in a day. The, both the products are ready to go the same day. Now the post lock says it's ready in 15 minutes. The SICA says it's ready in two hours. So uh, the SICA says it cures in three minutes, but you're not, to, you're not to put fence on it for two hours while it fully cures out. Uh, but in either instance, uh, the, like I said, the post lock's ready in 15 minutes. So it's gonna take you longer than 15 minutes to pour all those holes and work your way back around. So by the time you pour all your holes, work your way back around, the fence is ready to go, the posts are gonna be set up and ready for stringers and pickets. Uh, so on a small project, on a repair, I could see it being real useful in a repair situation as well, uh, where you really just wanna get in and get out. Uh, quick, set, quick, quick set concrete is an option, we use it on these two posts. I believe it's supposed to be set up and ready to go in two hours as well. So the post lock might be for an instance for a repair that you really don't wanna wait two hours for the quick set to cure up, you'd rather wait 15 minutes for the uh, foam to cure. So guys, overall, I'd say it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I'd say if we're talking about the foam products, the post lock is certainly the product to go with as of the initial testing. Now, like I said, we're gonna do further testing and follow-up testing with the post to see how they perform long-term. But as of, as of right now, the post lock product, I like it. It uh, is nice and firm in the hole. I wouldn't have any problem building fence on this today if we absolutely needed to. Uh, so in a case where you know, you've know you got a repair, you don't have access to water. You don't want to transport around 80 pound bags of concrete. This one box, it, had, it had actually had enough for two posts in it. So fairly light, it says the box itself was a little under eight pounds. So four pounds per post. Uh, it is more expensive. The one downside to post lock is I couldn't find it uh, locally. I ended up having to go online to find it. Now, depending on where you're watching this and your local market, you might have it available. Uh, but I, I ended up having to go online to get it. The only thing available locally was the Sika. Uh, I think after this video, I think you guys would agree the Sika product, I don't have a lot of faith in it. Now, is it firm? It's firm right now, but it didn't attach to the post. It didn't adhere to that post. And also on the last post, it didn't fill up that post entirely. 
so it's not going to give it a lot of support long term. Uh, we'll t we'll see we'll see more. We'll test it ongoing and just see if maybe the SICA surprises us. But as of right now, I like the post lock. Now that being said, I'm not sponsored by post lock. This isn't a sponsored content video. You know, I went and procured the the materials on my own. So it uh, it's about as fair and honest as it gets. So guys, appreciate you tuning in with me today. If you guys have questions or comments, suggestions as to other products or maybe different methods of installing the foam product, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I always love reading comments. I get back to them as quickly as I can. Uh, it seems like on some days there's quite a lot of comments that come in. So it might take me a little bit to respond, but I do love hearing from you guys. But for now, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.